Hello, pessoas! Bem-vindos a mais um episódio aqui do Inglês de Necro Rádio. E eu tô aqui falando mais uma vez sobre a super novidade que o Cambly pediu pra gente comunicar pra vocês. Que é o eu seguinte, estou vou... aqui também. Oi. <risos> Oi, gente. <risos> Você que quer fazer o free trial finalmente do Cambly pode estar concorrendo a um plano do Cambly. Ou seja, vamos lá. Se você quiser esse plano para você, né? Você sendo um adulto maior de 15 anos de idade, você pode ir lá no Cambly.com, no aplicativo do Cambly, e colocar o nosso código inglês no Cru Sorteio. Agora, se você tem uma criança em casa, ou seu sobrinho, sua prima, qualquer criança até 15 anos de idade, é, quer fazer inglês, quer falar com uma pessoa de fora, quer conhecer novas culturas, é só colocar o código inglês NC sorteio. Tudo isso vai estar nas show notes. Isso tudo pode ser feito até o dia 17 desse mês, desse ano, tá, gente? Agosto de 2020. Exatamente. Eu sei que vocês estão... Cansados, são tem tempos difíceis. Mas pode ganhar coisa de graça. Isso é bom. <risos> coisa de graça a gente sempre gosta. Então vamos lá, porque não custa nada para fazer o free trial e muito menos para ganhar, não é mesmo? Exactly. So go to Cambly, check all of this out, speak English with native speakers, and let's get on with the show. Hello, hello, hey guys, and welcome to another episode of English no Cru Rádio. As always, I am your host, and I am here with... Alexia. Hello, everyone. Hello, Foster. How are you today? Yes, my name is Foster, by the way. I forgot that part. I am doing well. <laughs> How are you? Yes, I'm doing well. We are recording this on a Monday, so I'm ready to go with this week. Yeah. I am currently in my childhood closet with clothes and books everywhere. So, why? Hopefully, the audio will be a little bit better <laughs> because, as many of our listeners, I imagine, I am currently living at my parents' house. So, it's yes. very noisy. There's a lot of stuff happening. <laughs> Okay, okay. So today we are talking about Today I wanted to kind of tell a personal story if that's okay with you. Of course. Well, people love personal stories. I love your story, so no problem at all. Okay, we'll see. We'll see how it goes. So, Alexia, last week we were talking about our new worksheets. So the worksheets are just like modern day study materials. They are the perfect way to complement English no Cru Rádio. So you can listen and read with all of the worksheets. We have all the best vocabulary, grammar, expressions, all of that stuff. And we talked about that last week. But I think a lot of people are still a little bit confused about what the worksheets are and how they can use them to benefit their English. Yeah. So I was thinking that maybe it's easier simply for me to tell my personal story and my personal experience learning language with worksheets. I think that's fair enough. Okay. So where do you want to start this story? Um, I don't know, Amor. It's your story. <laughs> <laughs> so I don't know where. Okay. So to start this story, we need to begin at the beginning. When I say at the beginning, I mean the very beginning. So Alexia, the first episode of English no Cru Rádio, we talked about another podcast called Notes in Spanish. Do you remember this? Of course. Okay. So Notes in Spanish is a podcast to learn Spanish, specifically Spanish from Spain. And it is a British man and a lady from Madrid. They are husband and wife. They have kids now. Very, very cute. Very, very nice people. And when we started Inglés Nui Cru, that was essentially the first idea. Like nothing 
no real quality resources exist for people learning English, for Brazilians learning English. So we wanted to create something similar, right? Right. Cool. So Notes in Spanish, they have a podcast. And in addition to their podcast, they have worksheets. So the worksheets have an entire transcription of the conversation. So you can really focus on all of the different words. And they also include a list of essentially everything that you need to know. All of the cultural references, the slang, the colloquial expressions, vocabulary, grammar. Are we on the same page? Yes, we are. Okay, excellent. <laughs> so that was just... I'm letting you tell your story, so... Okay. That was... I'm here as a listener as well. Okay, so that's just setting the scene. That is just to give a little bit more context about what I'm talking about. So I discovered Notes in Spanish when I was in university. And my junior year of university, which is my third year... I decided to study abroad in Spain, in Madrid, which means I decided to spend four months in Spain learning Spanish. Yeah, only four months? Um, so I studied abroad in Spain three different times, but this first uh, yeah, time yeah, that we're yeah. talking about, yeah, I think it was for well, almost exactly four months. Cool. Cool. So when I traveled to Spain... I really did not speak much Spanish. I could communicate in the very, like, most basic way, but I believe there were probably 15 students in our group, and I was definitely one of the worst students, if not the worst <laughs> student. I don't believe that, Foster. At all, I don't. No, to be honest, this is kind of... The point in my life where I transitioned from being a really bad student to a really good student. And the worksheets okay. helped me a lot to do that. Okay. Okay. So me and 15 other Americans, approximately, we are all in Spain. We're all trying to learn Spanish. So immediately when I arrived in Spain, I was listening to the Notes in Spanish podcast all of the time, just walking around the city trying to listen and repeat, and then I discovered the worksheets. So what I would do is I would walk around, you know, try to meet people, do the normal things that an American does in Spain while I was listening to the <laughs> podcast. And then when I would return to my host family, I would have the worksheet from that episode. I would review all of the vocabulary. I would try to shadow So I would try to listen and repeat in real time. And this had a crazy, crazy effect on my Spanish. Yeah, because I, I think that people, they misunderstand how you should use the worksheets. It's not, it's not only like listen while you, you read, you know, it's much more than that. It's much more than that. It's, It's almost the same when we are talking about like watching movies or shows with subtitles. You need to understand why you are doing that. Is it for practicing to get better at English or you're just doing that for fun? Exactly. So I have three different examples that I think will really illustrate this point. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. Number one, we already talked about vocabulary and how useful it can be to really understand like slang, informal expressions, colloquial expressions. So when I was studying with the worksheets with notes in Spanish, they had this word in Spanish. <laughs> That was not a problem with my Spanish. That was just me coughing. <laughs> Great timing, Foster. <laughs> yeah. So there's this word in Spanish, at least in Spanish from Spain, that is zumbado. Okay? Uh -huh. But everyone in Spain, when they're speaking fast, 
They say zumbao, zumbado. So it's really fast. Uh, it's they, almost they like an eat, owl. Yeah. yeah, exactly. They eat the D sound. So when I was listening to their podcast, I could never understand this word. And I was thinking, zumbao, zumba. Okay. I'm never going to use that crazy word. And then I saw on the worksheet, they explained, okay, this is actually zumbado. And we say it like zumbao. And it's a very informal expression that means like, Kind of crazy. And Buzzed. Sorry. Buzzed. Yeah. I'm I'm reading right now the 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 meaning because I really wanted to know what was it. Yeah. Uh, zumbar comes from like zzz, like the sound of a b makes buzz exactly. Um. Yeah. So I was still thinking like, huh, this word is a little bit crazy. I need to experiment. So in my Spanish classes and when I was trying to meet people in Madrid, I started to use this word and I would say things like, esta zumbao. And everyone <laughs> was like, dude, that's awesome. I've never <laughs> heard an American say that word. That's perfect. Yeah, that's awesome because, I mean, of course people will laugh, but they won't be laughing to make fun of you. They are going to laugh because, oh my goodness, he could do that. Yay, he's one of us now. Yeah, they were laughing from excitement and they, they were so yeah. impressed. So there's another word. I don't know if you have this word in Portuguese. The verb requebrar. Sim. What does that mean in Portuguese? Um. Requebrar, <laughs> it's when, like, você tá requebrando a, a cintura, dançando. Você tá requebrando, você tá dançando. Nice. So it's kind of like flirty, flirtation? Mm, no, I mean, no. Uh, it could be a, a bad thing to say, like, or a good thing to say, but it's not a flirtation at all. Um, at least no one ever flirted next to me using the <laughs> verb requebrar at all. <laughs> But I don't know. Okay. Anyways, my Spanish is not <laughs> perfect nowadays. But I remember one time when I was in Madrid, we were in a Spanish class and we were reading like a very old poem from the Middle Ages. And had requebrar as a word? And it had requebrar. <laughs> And my teacher was saying, like, this is not a super common word. Probably none of our students know this word. By chance, does anyone know it? And immediately my hand is like, zoom. I'm like, I know this word. <laughs> I read it in the, in the worksheets. And I remember my teacher was just like, he had this look in his face. Like, oh, Foster is the real deal. Like, he is... Such a good student. How in the hell did he know that word? He's incredible. But in reality, I just learned it from the worksheets. It was super easy. <laughs> yeah, so requebrar, it's sway in English for you. Oh, nice. Cool. In Portuguese, yeah. That makes sense. <laughs> okay. But that's awesome because you could show your teacher that you were actually like improving because when you are um, traveling and doing a an year or six months abroad and you are full of Americans or Brazilians or your people near you and next to you, um, your tendency is just like, okay, let's go have fun and let's not study at all. Yeah, exactly. So that gets me back to my story at the beginning. I started this trip as one of the worst Spanish speakers. And after four months, I was, okay, there was one girl that studied Spanish, like from birth. She was really, really good. I'm not counting her. <laughs> But apart from her, I was absolutely the best student. And that was not only with like vocabulary, but with grammar, with pronunciation. I could imitate Spanish speakers much better than the rest of the students. And perhaps most importantly, I could understand people so much better. 
because I had a much clearer idea of what people were actually saying. Yeah, I mean, I think that for me to understand their culture and what they are saying is amazing. Yeah. I think that if I would go, if I I go to... If I went? Germany. No. If I go okay. to Germany, I don't know how to speak German. And I would freak out because of that. Because I wouldn't be understanding what they are saying and how they are communicating. So, yeah, I don't know. Precisely. So let me give one more, just one more example to reinforce my point. So in Spanish, we have what we call the subjective. No, that's incorrect. We have what we call the subjunctive. You also, subjunctive. you have this in Portuguese. It's not as common in Portuguese as it is in Spanish, but for English speakers, native English speakers learning Spanish, the subjunctive tense is like the most difficult thing about Spanish. That is where oh, really? all beginners and intermediate students, they always have so many problems with the subjunctive, and that's where most people just quit and give up, right? Yeah. So I remember in the worksheets, they had so many examples of Okay, in this sentence, uh, she is using the subjunctive for this reason, or she is using it in this way. But I never knew exactly, like, the rules. Like, I could not explain to you when you should use the subjunctive and when you should use the indicative form. I didn't know that, but I knew how to use it in context. And I remember one day near the end of the semester when I was already speaking much better. And my teacher asked if I could kind of present a class, like a workshop, teaching the subjunctive to the other students. And I was thinking, no, I can't do that because <laughs> I don't really understand how to, like, explain these things in a grammatical way but I knew how to use them in context. So I knew intuitively how to speak Spanish. And that's the most important thing. The goal for us is to speak English fluently, confidently, without thinking too without much. Without thinking too much. Yay! Exactly. <laughs> so I think we are on the same page, Alexia. I think everyone should just experiment with some pages of our worksheets. Yes. And just to be clear, our worksheets, they were made by Felipe Foster and I. And Foster, he put, put the comments on it, like every correction and everything that you see there, it's Foster doing. And I gave another look at all the worksheets and I found a lot of Spanish words. <laughs> so it worked. His worksheets from his notes in Spanish worked a lot. That is absolutely true. My mind <laughs> just automatically is thinking, ah, language worksheets. This must be Spanish. <laughs> so Alexia had to correct a lot of my <laughs> corrections, but this is truly a labor of love. We've worked very hard on them, and we think you will really enjoy the worksheets, and you will really benefit and learn a lot from them. For sure. So, this is a, a love note, I think, from us to you guys, saying that it works. <laughs> Go ahead. Don't think twice. We did that just for you. <laughs> okay, on that note, we will call it a day for today, and we will see you guys tomorrow. Bye! Muito obrigada por ter escutado mais um episódio aqui do Inglês de Necro Rádio. É muito bom ter você juntinho assim de nós. Faz muito, muito carinho no nosso coração, digamos assim. Então você que está interessado em saber mais sobre os nossos produtos e saber mais sobre a gente, o que, que a gente oferece para vocês em relação a estudo, a challenge a curso, vai lá no inglesnecro.com e você pode ver mais sobre as worksheets, por exemplo, que a gente acabou de falar nesse episódio. Foster. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. 
If you want to really improve your English, if you want to learn more about the ways you can do that and just connect with us on a deeper level, go to inglesnoicru.com. And as always, keep up the good fight. And lose well. See you guys tomorrow. Bye.